by jumping, including by himself an extra fraction of a second because that throws Graysville. Cordy will try and run it in. Now he dumps it off. Touchdown, Christensen. saw all three BC assistant coaches come down out of the press box to the BC bench. They must be having some communication problem from their spotters boxes to the bench. Well, if that's true, then the, you'll see the Toronto people down on the bench as well because they're, are, they're not allowed to have phones working on one side and not the other. He has two engineering degrees out of Stanford. There's a reverse with Etheridge and Harold Holman comes through to make a key play. Well, they wanted to catch the flow, but Harold Holman wasn't having any of it. And maybe it's the, hope he hands off to Etheridge, but Holman came right up the field and said, hey, you helped me the last time, but uh, I got you this time. Harold Holman, a former Shenley Award winner as Rookie of the Year in the CFL back in 1986 when he was with Calgary. Hallman, a little aggressive as he and Jim Mills get tangled up, and there you see the reason for the penalty. Oh, he got two, oh, he got two of them. Oh, this looks like big time wrestling. What's going on out there? Keep the hits above the waist. Well, one of the newspaper headlines on the West Coast today, a column by Archie McDonald of the Vancouver Sun, referred to John Candy as Uncle Bucks. Uncle Buck was the name of the movie he was involved in, but the dollars he has contributed to the CFL this year are part and parcel of what they hope will be a big turnaround. Chris Skinner on the receiving end of the throw from Foody. Was searching all over the field for someone to throw to. Now this is signature Doug Flutie. He has taken about 15 seconds to execute this play. Nobody can get him. Flutie gives a two carry. Says, "Uh-uh." Mayo's down. Now he comes back over to the side. Campbell misses. Now he comes back over to this side. Warren will miss. Now he'll come back over. Complete a pass, and he said all of that work for only 10 yards. Now I want you to know that, that Leonard Johnson, he hasn't seen a CFL game before, and he's playing in one, and right now he's down on his hands and knees wondering when are they ever going to get me off this field. There have been more turnovers. He's been on the field now for about 15 minutes trying to catch Doug Flutie. That's a day's work for anybody. Joe Pow Pow's telling Doug Flutie, keep up the good work. Keep buying time. You're getting those linemen wore out. I'm in the lion's den here at BC Place, the private box of Lions owner Murray the Pez. Pezum, great game. This is what the CFL's all about. The blackout lifted. Couldn't be any better, could it? It couldn't be, really. It's, uh, it's got everything the public wants. Take a look at them. They're all going nuts down there. And how happy are you? You lifted the blackout, Murray. Great uh, promotion. Of course, of course. I'm the greatest promoter in the world. You know that. <laughs> One more question. Do you know everybody in this box? There's about 400 people here. <laughs> I think so. I think they name, name my name. I'm a popular guy. I can't help myself. They're mostly girls anyway. Yeah, well, I'm checking their accreditation personally. At Murray, great seats. How did you scoop up these tickets? I wonder. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Thanks, Murray. An injured ball player, Mike Campbell, is down at the 50. Well, Mike Campbell may get an Oscar for that. Uh, I don't think he got injured during the play. He got injured after he heard the signals. Maybe they called the wrong signal for him, and Obi is really upset. Look at him. Obi used to coach these guys. He knows when somebody's acting. Well, his complaints will fall on deaf ears. 6-12 is the time left in the game. Clemens is the lone man back. Big kick. Well, he made a lot of people.
beautiful miss, but Lorenzo Graham finally brought him down up at the 42-yard line. They like to flood one side with five receivers. Well, four weeks in a row, the Lions have been involved in this type of ball game. Daryl Smith. What a great catch by Daryl Smith. Nice pass by Ricky Foggy. This was a critical play in the ball game, and Foggy dropped back and acted like he was just going to an afternoon tee. He just dumped the ball over the middle. Sometimes you wonder where these quarterbacks get their confidence. Uh, we've seen some confident quarterbacks tonight, and there's no better play than what we've just seen right there. Ricky Foggy came up with a big, big play. So did Daryl Smith going up in front of Ken Petway. Twenty-six seconds, the time remaining. Foggy keeps. Touchdown. takes the step, drives through. There's all wedge blocking. All these guys are coming down to the inside. Moving the pile is what they call that. And Foggy takes it over where he finds the hole. He just moved him back. Schmidt made a key play. And if Lance Chomick can add the point after, we'll be tied at 38 with 24 seconds remaining. This is a typical BC ball game. That's what they always do. Down to the last seconds. Ricky Foggy's happy. He said, I saw that opening. I knew what was there, and I got the ball up high for Daryl K. Smith. We talked about the height advantage, and that's what Daryl K. Smith had on that last that set up the, the uh, touchdown, the last play down to the three yard line. You like tall guys, don't you, Don? He just got wedge blocking, they call that. Everybody's driving down for the inside. Foggy makes the scene. John Candy likes it a high five. All right, Uncle Buck. Susan Wax, Brian Cooper, owner Bruce McNall, all part of the uh, Argonaut management team celebrating the touchdown and the fact that the game is tied at 38. That's a great way. We got the fans entertained. We have the owners entertained. What more could anyone ask? Lions have already been involved in one overtime game this year. Will they get another? Intercepted by Don Wilson. Well, I know Christensen's not going to be very happy about that, but that ball was put right on his shoulder. Don Wilson just turned around and had the ball. Well, with 15 seconds remaining, the Toronto Argonauts can just as quickly turn it around the other way. Flutie went to his clutch receiver, Christensen. The protection is solid. He got a little bit of disturbance from Stu Hill and from Brian Warren, and then Wilson came up with the interception. Almost looked like a gift. It was a gimme. 